big questions with the dead milkman. Hey Dan, brace yourself for a no holes barred discussion of of Hovis bread today. Of what? Hovis bread. Hovis bread. Yeah. Hovis. There's a character in the Ipcris files whose complexion in the book of the Ipcris files whose complexion is described as being like Hovis bread. Hmm. All right. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's. I guess this is mine. Even though it was kind of like, you know. Forced upon you. It was you. forced upon <laughs> you by someone. <laughs> um, Joe, I feel like you should be, be like walking down like a street in London in the 70s or something. <laughs> With Hovis <laughs> Red under his arm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, okay, so today's big question is, well, uh, about Stoney's extra stout. Pig. Which... <laughs> Please lead to my first question, which hopefully you guys will answer uh, after I'm finished talking about it. Why the parentheses pig? <laughs> and also, what's with the t album type? <laughs> and um, just what's with this album? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do we make yeah. it? That's the question we get the most. Just why? So I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to say much. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, I, I don't want to bore anybody, but also I'm sure you guys have a lot to say about this. And I, I have these questions. But I will say, this is not my favorite album. Um, I was slightly disappointed in it, but there are definitely some great songs on it. Um, Helicopter Interiors, which you guys agreed to play live when I requested it however many years ago. Thank you. Um, I love The Man Who Rides the Bus. Um, Don't Deny Your Inner Child, which I think you guys played at the truck the last show with Dave, because <clears throat> I remember you playing a song I didn't know. Um, yes. Because the, the album came out about a year later, I think. Um, yeah, I we had it. just we had just recorded it. Before. We just finished recording it, but not mixing it when oh, we played you, that last you show. You recording it by those shows? Uh, yes. Those shows? Oh. We did. Um, <laughs> and I love I Can't Stay Awake and Big Deal. This album introduced me to the Shags just because Rodney says you can go out right now and get a Shags record. Yes, so, and now every barista working at Starbucks will tell you about the Shags. Yeah, <laughs> but in 1995, <laughs> yeah. cool. I, I hate know. myself for that. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, you influenced me in that way. Um, I love the fucking drum sound on this album. I don't know what it is. I just, I just think it's fantastic. Um, Actually, Sigma the whole Sound thing. Studios. It's what? Sigma Sound Studios. Oh, yeah. Sigma Sound Studio where Bowie recorded. And I think also there was a, an engineer, maybe a assistant engineer named Paul, I think, who ended up working with the low budgets on something, which I don't think ever got finished. But he was Steve's friend, Joe. You remember? Yeah. He was like bald. I think he was one of the engineers on this. <clears throat> you gotta let me into your party. I'm Paul, Steve's friend. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I mean, I uh, the, the only other thing I want to say is like, um, I'm really glad you guys put out this album because I always thought it was cool that you put out an album after you broke up, which does lead to the question why. But I just assumed <laughs> it, it was a, a contractual application or something. I wow. No, there is a contractual obligation that eventually comes up if you do the discography, but that's a whole other story. So that, that, that day, that's you people picked a good do. day to tune in. That's that's my portion of the uh, experience. Can I can I take the the title? Yeah, sure. Go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so um, <clears throat> one of my favorite things to do on vacation is go to cemeteries, and one of my favorite cemeteries is Highgate Cemetery in London. Uh, and and the boys and I were roaming around Highgate at one point, um, making a nuisance of ourselves, <laughs> as we often do. Uh, and we found a, a tombstone. A, a, well, not tombstone, I guess, is the best thing called a grave marker that was shaped like a rock, and it was for Richard Stony Smith. And it said, you know, Richard Stony Smith, who developed the wheat germ cracking process that made Hovis bread possible. <laughs> <laughs> And for some reason, we found that hilarious. And actually, we were staying later on in um, on that trip. Joe and I were talking about it on in uh, um, I think it's like a hotel slash bed and breakfast that was owned by Donovan's brother. And we saw a Hovis bread truck 
come down the street and we were all excited. We're like, hope is spread, hope is spread. So that that kind of put it in. Stout, I think, because we drink a lot of stout beer. Like if I see an oatmeal yes. stout, I'll drink it. It can be Drano flavored. It can be in a Drano. If somebody if somebody takes a label off Drano and just slaps oatmeal stout on it, I'll drink it. <clears throat> and pig, and you guys can correct me on this or not, but I believe that came from uh, when Matt Dubin uh, and I were coming back from something, and there was a guy, and this is weird. There's an episode of a, a sketch uh, in Kids in the Hall, just like it, where this guy was just shouting, pig, pig, pig. But in the, in the Kids in the Hall sketch, He's shouting it at this cop. He's like, pig, you're still, he's just insulting him. And then he walks away and the cop turns to another cop. And he says, why didn't you stop him? And, he, and the other cop goes, I thought he was a friend of yours. So there's there's a lot that that bleeds into the title. So, but it's basically uh, Richard Stoney Smith who invented the crack wheat germ process that made Hovis bread possible. Oh. Yep, that's it. That's it. Um, my memory of this record is, I mean, yeah, I mentioned we recorded at the uh, uh, famous Sigma Sound Studios here in Philadelphia, which sadly does not exist anymore. And yes, Bowie did record, what was it, Young Americans there? Yes. I believe. Yeah, and, Sigma um, kids used to go and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, I, I I think I remember generally the recording process was just fine. Um, and that fellow Paul was like the main engineer, I think, there. I mean, we sort of produced it ourselves. Yes. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I think there's, like Dan said, I think there's some good songs on it. Um, except for the one that I sang. Um, I don't know why I kind of yeah. dared myself to, like, I decided I wanted to sing one song on a Milkman record before we, we went our separate ways. So the song Crystal. It's your Moon. octopus's garden. Yeah, it's my <laughs> octopus's garden. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think I've listened to it in quite a long time. It's a, it's a good, sure it's, it's much better than anything I did on that record. I listened to it. Just... Cool. It's got a great groove to it. And your voice is kind of, like, creepy in a way. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I do remember liking the song Big Deal, which ends the album. Um, it was universally panned by everyone. Nobody particularly liked, <laughs> Nobody it. liked it. Including <laughs> me. <laughs> and you don't like, you don't like I, anything. You don't like I'd say 100% of my friends were just like, I, I, I hated this album so much, I tried to sue myself for appearing <laughs> on it Not and bad. won. <laughs> um, you know, and to be honest, I'm not especially happy with the way the cover turned out. I mean, it's supposed to look like a beer label, like a stout beer label. Yeah, it kind of does, but I don't know. I just think I could have done a better job in hindsight. I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much what I remember. Or want to say about it anyway. Joe, you want to say anything before I cold bust in? Well, okay, I, I guess I will. I'll explain a little bit anyway from the, my... Because as you probably know, we got dropped from Hollywood and then Restless wanted, Restless sort of came back from the dead and had our back catalog and asked us, they wanted to sign us to a three record deal and we did. And this was part of it. And yeah, we knew we were breaking up and we, knew, we but this is our last thing to do. Personally, I was happy. I was hoping that maybe this would just help us not to break up, but it only probably made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> it was a catalyst in the breakup yeah. <laughs> but we knew we knew at the end of 93 that we were going to stop touring and that's when we also at the end of that year probably around the same time that that uh, dan bought his copy of not richard patik we found out they dropped us from again or it was right after it right after christmas anyway <clears throat> we kind of did this record a lot of the same ways we did the other one far, as far as writing. Uh, I remember we, always, we we would always get together at my house on Tuesdays. For some reason, that was the day. And we recorded uh, songs as they came to fruition on 8-track because I, again, borrowed my brother's 8-track uh, task cam cassette and we made demos that way. And then took them to Sigma. We it, It's not credited on the album, but we also did over some overdubs and mixing at Third Story Recording with Scott Herzog as the engineer, but due to a typo or some, a line, a whole line got chopped in the 
in the art department somehow, but we didn't get a proof. And uh, so sorry, sorry the third story didn't get the credit and Scott didn't get the credit, but maybe he doesn't want the credit. <laughs> maybe yeah. not. Maybe I think the word blame, not he credit. Blame. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I I remember Dave's music. Dave wrote uh, the song "I Can't Stay Awake." Pretty much all, mostly his song. I helped him a little bit, but it was all his lyrics, and he had it uh, really really liked that song. It was very personal to him. Um, um, he also was important in the music for A Girl with a Strong Arm Train I Ride, Don't Deny, and When I Get to Heaven. All the good songs <laughs> in some ways. I don't know. I Listening back to it now, I kind of wish the last three songs were cut off and maybe we only had 12 songs instead of 15, but there you go. It's what it is. I, I, I wish all 15 songs had been cut. <laughs> all 18, there was like 15 songs. Oh, 15. I also remember when we mastered it, uh, we dropped, we uh, slowed down Like to Be Alone one semitone, so it's half a step slower than what it's recorded at. That's funny. <laughs> it's funny. There's because... one thing the punks are famous for, it's slowing things down. Yeah, we, we had to slow it down. <laughs> you know, I, was... I, I just remember this was my icebreaker conversation with you joe when i met you um i was like oh hey i really like the new album that you guys <laughs> you liar really liar well, i had to get in but somehow yeah. you know i didn't want to be like oh you know the kind of the first person that actually said he liked it wow <laughs> I, I, and i found some truth in the statement because there's definitely some song i also for, I forgot to mention chaos theory is a great song um the lyrics in that are amazing i did like it you know and i was just i was sad that you guys broke up but um, I just figured that was a nice way to, you know, start a conversation with someone. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> if it had just come out, I think it like maybe a week or so before that day. Or did and, you meet? Did you meet him at the coffee shop? No, it was at a Masonic temple in Yardley. <laughs> That's funny. There was a, like a show. It was a Touch Me Zoo show. I was going to yeah, say, do you guys know the secret handshake? <laughs> I actually explored the building. There was a ton of bands playing. Like, Cloud United was playing, Violent Society. There was a ton of bands. It was like all day thing. Um, I went through the Masonic Hall here in Philadelphia, the big one with John S. Hall from King Vessel once. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great that's tour. <laughs> a great place. Um I'm just going to hop in and say, you guys ever watch Todd in the Shadows? And Todd in the Shadows will begin an episode by going, welcome to another installment of Nirvana Killed My Music Career. Well, that's <laughs> kind of what this is. Um, you know, at the time this album came out, there was a lot of grunge, too much grunge, even a little grunge sometimes. So I was at the time interested in bands like Rasputina. You know, to me, the clouds had parted and I thought, well, there's got to be another way. So I really wasn't interested in in any sort of, music that that you know had guitar bass and drums i thought three women with cellos is the future and it still might be <laughs> um but uh yeah this was you know it just the the whole nirvana thing and the whole grunge thing soured everybody on punk you just didn't kind of want to do it anymore um now uh there had been some debate about not richard but dick whether or not it's a bad album but there seems to be no debate on this one this is a terrible album this album is so bad this album is so bad. How bad is that? Thank you. This album is so bad. When we went to get the master tapes, we found that they had been put in a lead container and dropped three miles off the coast. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good album. Um, the um, There was, my writing on it was particularly lazy. Um, I look back on it and I see The Girl with the Strong Arm, which is the laziest form of songwriting. Um, this is a... Uh, David Bowie and William S. Burroughs used to do a thing they called cut-up writing, where they take a newspaper and cut up stuff and they'd rearrange it. Don't do this, people. You're, you're not David Bowie or William S. Burroughs, and neither am I. Um, this is just lazy song. This is when you know you've run out of ideas. Uh, like Usually recording instruments backwards is a bad sign, but this is the other bad sign from a songwriting perspective. Don't do the cut-up stuff. Um, the... Uh, um, Looking down through this, there's just a bunch of stuff I wish I had not 
I wish I hadn't even turned in. It's I'm not not pleased with my writing at the, on this at all, which is a shame because there was a song that I had and I've always wanted to revisit it and fix it. And I've tried over the years. I couldn't. There was a song that was, I planned to end this with called High on Life. And I still have the notes for it. I should I should have dug those out before the show. But they're in my my scrawl. I was born left handed and forced to write right handed. So you can't read anything I write. Yes, Joe. It's like ancient hieroglyphics. Um, but what happened was the song High on Life was a song about a young boy who had it's told from the story. He's a man now. And when he was young, he was smoking weed behind the church and a youth pastor caught him. And the youth pastor said was telling him how I don't need drugs. I get high on life. And he say things like, like last Saturday, I put, you know, I went down to the basement. I don't like my wife to clean up down there because she says the ventilation is bad. And I went down there and I began cleaning and I began getting some turpentine. And the next thing I knew, the clouds had opened. In other words, he's getting high off the fumes. He doesn't know it. And there's another thing about like, you know, I remember one of the lines was something like when I was, uh, um, Oh, like a missionary. It's like a missionary in like Afghanistan or the Golden Triangle or something. And you know, I remember I just found a, a field of red flowers. And, and in other words, it's opium poppies. And that was the whole the whole thing of high on life. And it would have been like seven minutes long. I can't <laughs> was, do this now. I think I I don't know. I've tried to fix it. It's one of those everybody has like songs that they've tried to fix. And they just can't fix them. It just can't get it to work. And it kept being cliche, where it's like, you know, sometimes I'll make a model airplane. I'm like, that's too easy. So it's like usually by the first bit, cleaning the garage, you get the idea of the joke, and it just it just pounds it to death. Although that's never stopped me before. But um, yeah, it's a uh, um, oh, it, it, it uh, that might that might have made me feel a little bit better if that got on there. I always felt good that uh, not Richard but Dick, not one of my favorite albums, ends with woman who's also a mongoose. There was no woman who was also a mongoose on this, so I have to ask Joe's permission to talk about something. And and Joe, you can cut it if you don't want to talk about it. Um, but do we want to talk about who covered one of the songs on this album? Sure, and we we talked about this in previous. Episodes oh, we did? of big questions, but we I don't watch the show again. <laughs> well, I watch Wang yeah, on watch Saturday. Sometime, go ahead. Somebody covered who covered it? Some Corey child Feldman actor. covered. Corey Feldman covered what is truly my favorite Dead Milton song. Uh, I'm flying away, um, and he covered it on his child actor album. And there's a podcast that I really love. It's a humor podcast. And they were going through his child actor album song by song. And they didn't finish. Thank God they didn't finish before they got or they skipped it. They didn't do I'm Flying Away. I was like, thank you, guys. Thank you for not not trying. And here's the thing. People like to bust on Corey Feldman. He's a better singer than I am. So I can't say anything about him. I mean, he's made some interesting life choices, I guess. But, um, you know, um, I, it, it's just weird. Like, that's. That's your claim. That's just how um, different this album is. The one person who was inspired by it was Corey Feldman. I think there's a, um, it's like a, um, he's got that next to, there's two covers, and I think it's one like one of those rocking Christmas songs. Did you the, guys get like notified about that before it happened? No. It was an angry found, letter at the time. I found out about it. No, I mean, it, it on a too. label, like, he just put it out like he didn't. I'm mean, sure he got clearance, but, but you know, it's not like we got rich off it or anything. It was there was nobody there to answer the phone at the time. I think we just had a message set up and said, "Hi, this is a Dead Milkman. You want to cover one of our songs? Go mm -hmm. ahead." And yeah, what yeah. year was that anyway? Because was it not long after the album came out? Yeah, that was a long time. He didn't need to get permission anyway. Yeah, this yeah, was in the really nineties, I think. <laughs> yeah, I do covers all the time without getting permission. It's only but if you he, want to police them. But we did get we get, we got royalties. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> that's that's the one he looked at and thought, oh yeah, this is my yeah, ticket. I, I scratched my head at that too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's one of the songs I wrote, and I'm guilty of bringing that to us. And I guess <laughs> who knows songs, how it got put on the album. <laughs> were there other songs um, that just didn't get recorded, or were that like you said you had demos of these songs? There was a there's an instrumental that never got words put onto it and it was called curling, but I don't remember how it goes anymore, but I just remember that title. And that was also Curling a takes me away. <laughs> yeah, it was like I sailing. But that's what you would think. That was a day a day blood or riff that maybe could have used a third part. I don't know. 
And then there was, there's a Dave song called Noise Boys Toys. I remember that. Which I don't, I just didn't make it, I guess. Although it did get, I think it's on the multi-track. I, well, I guess I'm responsible for the lyrics for the man on the bus. Oh yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wrote, I wrote that to Dean. Dean wrote the lyrics first and I wrote music to it after the lyrics. Right. And it, the gist of the song was, is like, what if you're riding the bus and, and God was sitting next to you on the bus or whatever? It sounds like a Joan Osborne song. Isn't there a well, regular that's song? The, that's by the I, I wrote that song. I wrote that song first and then Joan Osborne released a song called what if god was one of us and written by the guy from the hooters yeah yeah not long it, after that it came out after, after my song our song our song <laughs> and i actually i thought that okay so that's stuff. so man who rides a bus was first that's it's that's just, my understanding that our song was first but it when just uh, it doesn't explicitly <laughs> say it was god okay what if God? But when I when I heard, I swear to God, if anybody sings that. What if God was on the bus song by the Hooters? I will reach through the screen and strangle you. <laughs> that guy wrote that song, by the way, just to show somebody he could write a song in like five minutes. That's how you write the hits. <laughs> yeah, and you spend anything longer than that in a song, it's, it's not bullshit. Yeah. It's I keep telling. I'm saying that, but I wrote where the tarantula lives, the lyrics to that, and in like five minutes to show Rich Kaufman that I could write a song very quickly. Yep. So. And it shot up the charts. It did. And it was covered by Corey <laughs> Feldman. Corey, if you're watching this, okay, <laughs> That's a better brother, song to do. <laughs> yeah, brother, you want to you want to come on this show, you're more than welcome to, because I I'm pretty sure we could get some questions. We'd let everybody know, like next week, Corey Feldman, and then we have them submit some questions and we would we would filter out the weird ones and also the weird Right wing weirdos. That are I'd, popular. I'd love him to do a cover of like Sri Lanka Sex Hotel or something. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. It. Like, is did, did the producer bring the song to him and said, "Corey, you got to record this <laughs> one," or did, or did he already know who the Dead Milkman were? I don't know. He came running in the room. <laughs> of the CD. What kind of producer? <laughs> I bet we tracked down the four or five people that bought this album. He might have been one of them. I bought one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> It was Folks, before you know, the, everyone, before, yeah, every show streaming. we play and every album release, Joe actually buys tickets to the show and he buys the <laughs> not anymore. Copy the not album. anymore. He doesn't do it anymore. No. Not anymore. anymore. I stopped. No, he stopped. The fees that. got too high. <laughs> <laughs> We're not working with Live Nation anymore. <laughs> I don't I know. know what the fee thing is. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Corey will come on episode two hundred. Yeah, that's true. We'll have to talk about that later. How about we won't have an episode 200 until Corey Feldman agrees to do it? Corey, Monty Python, rule number Corey 12, there shall be no episode 200. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. We should go to recommendations. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know how much time yeah. we got here. Is that your recommendation? Okay. My recommendation oh. is to go to recommendations. Um, I'm going to recommend a video game, which I think might be the first only time I've done this correct me if i'm wrong but, um <clears throat> it's called uh mario wonder and it's a new super mario brothers game it's actually pretty cool um i have never gotten into um well i've never really gotten into video games that much but the kids are into them my kids and uh <clears throat> mario wonder was a for our christmas present for charlie and we started playing it and then the next night, I was like, "Ooh, I want to play that," and nobody else wanted to. And I started playing it. It's it's it reminds me of the old one, like <clears throat> the very first one, which I loved as a kid. But it's better graphics. You get cool power ups, like you become an elephant, which is interesting. Um, but this is my favorite part so far. <clears throat> you can go in certain pipes. You know how you can like go down like one of those pipes, and sometimes you'll end up in the foreground, and then other times you end up in the background and then you can like do stuff there too but what i like is that it's not <clears throat> totally like fancy and like 3d i never got into the 3d ones i feel like it's overwhelming you have too much land you can cover <clears throat> i like the side scrolling like kind of thing so yeah that's my recommendation john leguizamo was a tour de force in the super mario brothers movie <laughs> All right, we got 10 minutes. We got to move on. I, I would like to recommend a book, which I got, I asked for and got for Christmas. 
It is called Three Rocks, the story of Ernie Bushmiller, the man who created Nancy. It's written by Bill Griffiths. Griffith, Bill Griffiths is responsible for the comic strip Zippy the Pinhead, if you are familiar. Um, it is a uh, history of the Nancy comic, which started back in the 1930s and is still being published to this day. Um, after he died in the 80s, somebody else took it over, and now there's a new person who took it over. There's a little bit of a mystery who's drawing it right now. They choose to remain anonymous for some reason. Um, so I would recommend you check out the book. If you like Nancy, I know it's an acquired taste, but I like Nancy. Um, I Even so, I was inspired to make my own copy of Five Card Nancy, which I'll provide a link to the background of it. But Five Card Nancy is a card game um, which has nonsensical um, Ah. <laughs> anyway, I just get the answer. idea. I'll, I'll send you the. I'll, I'll post post the link, and you guys can check it out. So that's my recommendation: Three Rocks, the story of Ernie Bushmiller, the man who created Nancy, a book review. Okay. And since this is going to be our last show for a while, I've got a shitload of recommendations, so I got to bust through them in the time we have. Uh, first thing: R.I.P. Tommy Smothers. Um, Tommy Smothers is a hero of mine. His his comic timing is a lot like Joe's. It is. Absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm going to recommend um, a uh, um, and uh, we'll put up the clip. It's a clip called "Don't Attack My Mustache," and it is brilliant. Um, also, if you see me on stage, which with the band, you'll notice sometimes Joe will go into a solo, and I will say, "Play on Magic Fingers." This is where it comes from. I saw this when I was a very, very young child. Uh, and actually, play on Magic Fingers, Tommy Smothers picked up that line from a writer on the show by the name of Steve Martin, who played the banjo. Um, so uh, at one point, uh, CBS was very upset with the progressive politics of the Smothers Brothers show. So they decided to, to try to get rid of it. And one of the things they did was cut the budget. And Tommy Smothers actually paid all the writers out of his pocket, but didn't tell them. So R.I.P. Tommy Smothers, he was a very good man. Um, up next, uh, if you like comedy, because I mentioned Tommy Smothers, uh, Michelle Wolf is amazing. Uh, please check out the Netflix special Michelle Wolf Joke Show. It's from 2019, um, and it begins with a whole piece about otter rape. <laughs> and it, it gets raunchier from there. So that is really, really good. She's the one that got everybody upset at the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner back you, a few years back. Um, up next, um, I want to recommend the new... Dungeons and Dragons movie. Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. I've waited 45 years at least for a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. This one is fantastic. I would give it an 8 out of 10. I'm being absolutely serious. Until we're never going to get another Monty Python film in our lifetime, but we have this. It is as close as you're going to get to a Monty Python film. The scene with the intellect devours is really, really good. Uh, every scene, there's just so many great lines. Like, you know, you, you can ask five questions. Well, why five? That's very arbitrary. It's it's excellent. So I, I was super happy with that. It bombed at the box office. It shouldn't have. It should have been a big success. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to recommend, there's a, um, a channel I like to watch called Wang, W-H-A-N-G with an exclamation point, uh, run by a very funny gentleman. And he does tales from the internet. So if like me, if somebody says to you, hey, kid, I'm a computer, stop all the downloading, and you start to laugh, you're like me. You, you know all the old stuff from the internet. So the episode I'm recommending is Tales from the Internet uh, Poop Story Compilation, two hours. Two hours of poop stories. It's got everything. It's got two girls, one cup. It's got poop guitar. Uh, it's got it's got urinal poop. Um, and Jankum is in there. All that stuff. So if you're like me and you laugh at poop, yes, I, I can't recommend this one enough. So there you go. Whang! Wow. My recommendation is a cookbook. It's Snoop Dogg's cookbook. From Crook to Cook. It came out in 2018. This is actually Jay's copy cookbook, but uh, I like it. I cooked out of it, and I I recommend it has it has a great salmon recipe, uh, an interesting macaroni and cheese. But yeah, it would probably go some some. I just made the salmon today. That would have gone well with uh, that dinner. Uh, the the wine, yes. It, so he, everybody, he, everybody he shows you his pantry. It? it doesn't have weed in it. it doesn't have any weed recipes. But it has desserts and breakfast, lunch, dinner, and drinks. And he show, shows you his pantry, explains 
the basic ingredients he uses throughout without it's it's mostly stuff most people find i mean you could easily find in supermarkets and stuff it's not like fancy pants but it's great martha stewart wrote the foreword of course yeah they're pals and that's it for me all right joe do you want to do the honors and tell everybody what's up well we this is our last episode for a while we're going to take a break and like we said we're going to do we're not going to do episode 200 till we can get Corey feldman as a guest star <laughs> um and, here's uh, the thing but people i know you're disappointed but again <laughs> we're not charging you for this show you're about to <laughs> you be paid go back and not, watch yeah it's like it's, it's like we're always demanding that you know people get like time off you know that's terrible they give those amazon workers no no time off and stuff but and and we're all like, but but then we're we right. ask for just a little time off and we're everybody, also going like, to be what? working on something else yeah, and I'm giving you to talk about. If you meter out your two hours of poop stories, <laughs> yeah, you can, so there and you which go. this show, this show, you, it can be described as as 199 episodes of poop stories. <laughs> um, but if you meter that out, that's why I was giving you all that stuff. You meter that out. You watch the D, the Dungeons and Dragons movie. You go through everything we've recommended. Go back and go through the recommendations. Try them all. Film yourself trying <laughs> all the recommendations. Make a show out of that. Make a show out of that. Put it up because the whole point of this band is that you can do what we do. You know, you can you can make the kind of music we make. You can you can't dress as cool as I do, but you know you you get where I'm going. You can do what we do. So that would be a good project for some of you. Make each week go to our recommendations and just try the recommendations and let us know if we were right or wrong. Now, I know Dan's recommendations are like, you know, try looking around the room. But some of them, <laughs> like today, was Super Mario Kart. Okay? There's no carts in this. See, I'm living proof of what you said, though, because you, I'm proof that you, I can do what you were doing. That's I'm right. Do now. So, do we have anything we should add before, before we sign off for our little break? If you go to our individual channels, too, it's probably going to be stuff there. God knows. There's yeah, like and subscribe stuff. our individual channels. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, I'm not our pushing you to our individual channels. channels. No, I'm not a like or subscribe kind of person. I, that'll make me unlike and unsubscribe. <laughs> make sure you hit the like button. Yeah, make sure I hit your like button. <laughs> yeah. If you hit the like button on any of this stuff, it automatically sends a signal to a team of psychologists somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like an like ambulance pulls up out front and you get to spend some time in the disenchanted kingdom. We, we will come back. The show will, will come back, okay? With special guest, Dexie's Midnight Runners. Right. <laughs> It'll be the big with guest vocalist Corey Feldman. Yeah. All right, I'm out of uh, here. We should go now with him. I, I now begin our vacation. <laughs>